This is Ben, and Ben's not his real name, but this is Ben, and he's in real estate. And Ben wants to retire at 53 years old. So right now he's 51 years and nine months. His current salary is $36,000 a year. Now, Ben is in a commission-based business. And so $36,000 is his base, and he gets commissions on top of that. So he, we, we just want to use the base for our planning, and then commissions are going to be added in on a yearly basis. So really, as we do our reviews of his financial plan, we're going to add in the commissions, and those will be brought into the plan. But for this scenario, for this strategy for you guys, I'm just going to use his base salary. Now, he wants to retire at 53 years old. So let me stop right there for a second. So 53 years old, that's a lot earlier than most individuals are retiring. Now, the average retirement age today, based on recent surveys, is about 64 years old. It was 62 years old last year, but because of inflation and market loss, we've seen the average retirement age go up to 64 years old. So Ben wants to retire at 53. So retiring at 53 is nine years. Actually, I'm sorry, that's 11 years earlier than what the average American is retiring. So there's a couple different factors that we really have to consider if we're going to retire at 53. If we're going to retire in our 50s, the first factor you want to think about is how long am I going to be in retirement? Like how long is Ben going to be in retirement? The average male today is living to about 82 years old, but that's today. Okay. You're, you're thinking about at 53, you've got 30 years before you get to 83. And so healthcare increases and the way you live life is better than what, you know, our grandparents did. And so you're probably going to live a lot longer than what the average individual is living. So if we're retiring at 53 years old, we have to think in our mind, how long do I want to project my retirement income? And along that 30-year period, what's going to happen? Because if you look at a 30-year period of the stock market, there's going to be at least, at least five recessions. And in those five recessions, you're going to have some stock market crashes, okay? You're going to have some stock market downturns, like 20%, and then you're going to have some stock market crashes. So the first thing we're looking at is, I'm going to retire at 53 years old. I need to project out how long I'm going to be in retirement. And then I start thinking about what's going to happen in that 30-year period. So the first thing we're thinking about is, okay, if I want to retire at 53, let's say we're going to live to 90, um, we're going to have some stock market issues within that time frame. Meaning if we're getting our retirement income from the stock market, there's going to be some volatility in that income and we need to be prepared for that. So the second thing we're going to look at is social security. When do we want to claim social security? So if we're retiring at 53 years old, we're thinking about how long we're going to be in retirement. We're thinking about where our retirement income is going to come from. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But the, the third thing we're thinking about is when do I want to collect social security? So for Ben, we're looking at collecting social security at 62 years old, which would be $2,126 per month. The reason we're going to use 62 for this scenario, and we're going to look at a couple different ideas for him, but the reason we're using 62 is because he's retiring at 53 and he's going to have basically nine years of using his retirement assets for retirement income. And so because we're using nine years of retirement income, if the market doesn't return what we project, if the market or if we have emergencies come up and we need more retirement income than we expect, we need to have some kind of income, like a lever that we can pull to give some relief to our retirement assets that are paying out our retirement income. So for him, we're going to look at Social Security. There's no pensions. There's no guaranteed income outside of Social Security. Remember, Social Security, for the, for the majority of you, is the only guaranteed income that you're going to get, right? It's the only guaranteed income that's backed by the full faith and credit, the United States government. You can make whatever joke you want there. But it's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, and it has a COLA increase on it. They've been doing it since the 1970s. The COLA increase has averaged about 1.94% since the 1970s. It's going to be higher than that over the next few years. Obviously, we're putting some higher inflation numbers on the board.
So we're going to retire at 53 and we're going to take Social Security at 62. Now, remember, if he decides to take Social Security at 62, he's only going to get 70 percent of his full retirement benefit. Now he was born after 1960. So this is for him. You know, if you were born previous to 1960, then your full retirement age is different. But for Ben, he was born after 1960. So at 62, he's only going to get 70% of his full retirement benefit. And you can actually go to the social security website and get this. Uh, if you want, uh, they actually have a new website coming on board if you ever want to check that out. Um, and if we wait to any other age, 63, 75% of his benefit, 64, 80% of his benefit, 65, 86. So you can see how this is increasing. So if you decide to take it at 65 in six months, you're going to get 90% of your benefit. If you go, oh man, the market's crashing, I need it now, 63 in five months, you get 77% of your benefit. So it can be factored in. I'm just using 62 as kind of like round numbers, 62, 67, 70. It's just easy for me to do those round numbers. So if we wait till 67, Ben will get 100% of his full retirement benefit. If he waits till 70, he's going to get 124% of his full retirement benefit. So we're going to take Social Security at 62, which is 70% of his full retirement benefit. Now let's go over to assets. So from an asset standpoint, We've got about $890,000 saved for retirement. So we have $890,000 saved for retirement. And if you look at his different assets, we've got Roth money, we've got 401ks, we've got SEP IRAs, Roth traditional IRAs. We've got some non-qualified in there. That's your freedom bucket or your taxable brokerage account. And then we've got some bank money. So when you look at his assets, the first thing you got to ask yourself when you're thinking about, I'm taking out retirement income before Social Security kicks in is, how am I going to get my retirement income? Remember, Ben's 53 years old. So the first thing you look at is say, well, can you use the rule of 55? Well, he's not 55 years old. So you can't use the rule of 55. But what is the rule of 55? If we waited to age 55, Ben could actually use his 401k, his current 401k, for retirement income, as long as he leaves it in the current 401k, he can use that for retirement income without paying the 10% penalty. Don't believe me? Let's go to the IRS because those guys, they're always right. Let me show you this on the IRS's website. Okay. So this is the rule of 55, or if you work for the government, it's called the rule of 50. Distributions made to you after you separated from service with your employer, if the separation occurred in or after the year you reached age 55, or distributions made from a qualified governmental benefit plan as defined in Section 414D, if you are a qualified public safety employee, federal, or state, local government, you can do this at age 50. Okay, so you've got the rule of 55 and the rule of 50 if you work in government. So what this is saying is he can actually delay his retirement to 55 and he can use his 401k for retirement income without paying the 10% penalty you would get for taking money out of your qualified assets, qualified assets, meaning pre-tax assets or Roth 401k, Roth IRA. You could use that 401k for retirement income if we could get to 55 without paying the 10%. Penalty, but Ben wants to retire at 53. So what do we do? Well, the only other thing we can do is, is really we can either drain his non-qualified money. So this E-Trade account, that's this brokerage account. He's got $90,000 there. And we've got $8,000 in cryptocurrency, which is not, if I guess if I did the analysis today, probably isn't worth $8,000. But let's just assume, let's say cryptocurrency out of there because that's a volatile asset. So as E-Trade, he's got $90,000. We can use that $90,000 as a brokerage account without paying a 10% penalty. You just pay taxes on capital gains, interest, you get to write off capital losses, those kind of things. But $90,000 is not going to get him from 53 to 59 and a half. So we've got to start looking at other avenues. So a 72T, it's where you take your IRA and you turn it into substantially equal periodic payments. If you go on the IRS's website, type in SEPP, and you can learn all about substantially equal periodic payments using a 72T. It's basically taking your IRA and turning it into a structured payment plan. 
Talk to your CPA, your tax accountant, your financial advisor, your investment advisor, somebody before you do it. Make sure you understand it completely. So he's got two options. We can use the brokerage account or we can use a 72T. So that's what we're going to have to do for income between the ages of 53 and 59 and a half. So now we look at it and we say, okay, we've got assets of $890,000. We're going to use a portfolio average. So the money that's in the market is going to average about 6%, except for the bank. The bank's going to earn zero. Banks still earn zero. Interest rates are up and the bank is still earning zero. Unless you go to Marcus or if, unless you go to Ally or if you go to a high yield savings account, a lot of good ones online uh, where you can get three, three and a half, maybe even 4%. But for him, it's just in a basic checking account. It's going to earn zero. So we're going to use 6% as our rate of return for the money that's in the market. Now, remember, think about it this way. The market's averaged 10% over the last 50 years. That's 8% with inflation, okay? So we're going to look at averaging 6% for the rest of his retirement, meaning we've adjusted our retirement investments for now being in retirement. So we're not going to invest the same way we were pre-retirement now that we're in retirement. I always like to think about it. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Disney World, Disneyland, or you've been to Six Flags or any kind of amusement park. But when you get on a roller coaster, I like Space Mountain. We live about an hour and a half from Disney World. It's really like two hours if you get on the interstate here in Florida. But it's an hour and a half at like 2 a.m. Nobody's on the road. There's a ro roller coaster at Disney called Space Mountain. And Space Mountain's awesome because you go into it. It's dark. It's like you're in outer space. And you get on the roller coaster and you're like, boom, boom. And it's all in the dark and you're twisting and turning. Like, you know you're going to get off the roller coaster. Like, you start here you know you're going to get off. You just don't know where because it's dark and you're spinning. That's a lot like being in the market. Like I'm 37 years old. I'm actually 37 years old in two days. So I'm 36. I'll be 37 in two days. My investments at 37 are on a roller coaster, right? It's in the dark. I'm spinning around. I'm just putting money into the S&P 500 and the VTI, into VOO, into the QQQ, whatever. I'm buying these things hoping that they're going to be higher when I get to my 50s and 60s. I know I'm going to get off and I'm going to retire. I just don't know what that's going to look like from point A to point B. Once you get to point B, like once you get to retirement, you get off of Space Mountain. You get off of the Hulk. You get off of the whatever your favorite roller coaster is. And you move to the what I call the Walt Disney World Railroad, where you know like, all right, we're getting off on Main Street. We're getting off on Frontierland, we're getting off at Tomorrowland or wherever the stops are at. It's a little bit more steady eddy. It's not necessarily that you're giving up your stock market money. Maybe you have money that's in the roller coaster still. But what you're trying to say is, I now I need to keep my retirement assets instead of making a ton of money. Because what you're going to do is you're going to sit at the water cooler and all your buddies, once you're retired or if you're at the pool or beach or golf course or whatever, and they're going to say, oh, my gosh, I bought this new stock and I made 10, 20, 30 percent. You can't believe in all the stuff I'm making, da, 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 da. What they're not telling you is about all their losses, right? It's like the guy that says, I bought, I caught a fish that was this big. But he doesn't tell you about all the times he went to the fishing hole and never caught a thing, right? I got a deer. It was a 10 point buck. But like you've been sitting out there for like three months, never caught anything, right? So it's the same way in retirement. It's now about you, how much you keep versus how much you make. So we've got $890,000 in retirement assets. So we look at expenses. So current expenses for him, this is a really good scenario that I want to show you here on YouTube because a lot of people, um, it's, it's, it's unique. And I think this scenario will help you in your retirement planning. So his current monthly expenses are $2,666. That's baseline, okay? So that's his base expenses. But they're going to be different it's going to be higher than that for a certain time frame. So we're going to show that. So 2,666 is just like basic stuff. But then we got to add fun in. We got to add in some added expenses. And we're going to show you that. Now, inflation on his expenses, we're going to do 3.24%. That's the 108-year average. So since 1914 to now, 3.24% is the 108-year average for inflation. Current 10-year average is 2.15. Obviously, it's going to be higher over the next few years. 
But again, we're not looking we're not looking at this like it's you know, I always get comments. Oh, man. I, yeah. Two, six, uh, you know, three percent inflation, not in 2022. Well, yeah, I know not in 2022, but I'm thinking over the long term. Right. Again, the market's going to go up. Market's going to go down. Inflation's going to go up. Inflation's going to down. Uh, the economy is going to go through peaks and valleys. Right. We have a peak and then we have a trough and then we go up the peak and then we come down. So your investments and how your, your plan has to adjust based on that. But what we're doing with an EKG is we're saying, OK, based on this moment in time, we're trying to take all the knowledge that we have, all the information that we can can accumulate and give the best projection going forward. OK, so same with same with anything in life. Right. You're trying to take all the available information and say, OK, what can I do to get the best answer possible? So we're going to do these projections and we'll do reviews on a yearly basis to update things as we need to. So from a cash flow standpoint, here's his cash flow. So if Ben, he wants $55,000 in income when he retires until age 65. So remember, his expenses are $2,666. That on an annual basis, let's see, 2666, six, six, multiply that by 12, that's $31,992. But we need an extra, basically, what's that, 55 minus 31, $24,000. These are these two outflows right here until somewhere between 20, 2035 and 2034. At that point, he's telling me that he's going to be able to back off of how much retirement income he needs. It's, again, it's why we want to have reviews, because that's probably going to change. Now, we're also factoring in for Ben an inheritance of about $175,000. His parents aren't old. They're not dying, but eventually they will pass away. And there's about $175,000 in physical assets that he will inherit. And then he also wants to factor in some new cars. He does like purchasing cars. He does it about every 10 years. And so we factored in the cost of new cars in there. We're trying to get as close to the nail. Like, you know, people say, well, uh, handgun or not handguns, hand grenades and horseshoes, right? That's, the only, you know, close enough. Well, we're trying to get as close as we possibly can uh, to what his situation is actually going to look like. So pre-retirement. We're basically retiring, 53 years old. We'll have $929,000 saved for retirement when we retire at 53. Matthew says this, live in Florida also. So land of the free, man. I'm 62 and retired. The highest cost for me is health insurance. You're not kidding. Health insurance is a huge cost. That's a portion of that 55,000 that Ben, we're calculating in, is health care. You know, Medicare doesn't kick in until 65. So if you retire at 52, 53, health insurance is going to be one of your biggest costs. I just got off the phone with my uncle. He went on Medicare a couple of years ago. And, you know, one of his biggest costs when he retired at 60 was health insurance. He actually did like a MediShare type thing because he was healthy and because he didn't have, uh, you know, chronic illnesses. But if you've got something chronic, if you're on a medication that is expensive, health care is going to be your biggest expense in retirement. I just saw, and I, I'll let me digress for a second here. Let me show you something. This is the cost of living. And Matthew, I blame you because I have ADHD, so I blame you for making me do this. But this is the cost of healthcare um, per state. This is Genworth's website. You can get go on this website. Just go to Genworth, you know, do this link, and you can pick a state. So let's pick Florida because Matthew and I both live in Florida. And so if you look and let's say 20 in 2031, so 10 years from now, this is 2021 when the website was built. So 2031, it says 10 years, monthly median cost for the state of Florida. If you need, let's say, nursing home facility, like today, the semi-private room is $8,600 monthly. In 2031, it's 11630 Woo! Private room, 12000 in 10 years. So assisted living, 2031 cost, 5300 per month. And then home health aid, 6406 This is where most of my clients are. They're like home health care, homemaker services, things like that. So you really want to factor in health care because it is definitely going to be the most expensive thing that is in your retirement and it needs to be factored in. So I digress. Thank you, Matthew, for uh, putting me on that rabbit trail. So here's we, here we go. So if Ben retires, let's go to retirement. Ben retires at 53. We've got $929,000 in assets. Here's our monthly cash flow, the income that we want 
the extra $55,000. Again, it's got inflation on it. Here's our expenses. That's just our baseline expenses. And as you can see, that's got inflation on it. So we've got these two things going out right on a monthly basis. We've got Social Security kicking in at 62. There's the 21, 26 kicking in at 62. It's got a COLA increase on it as well. Now at 62, look at this. We started at $929,000 in assets. At 62, we've got $565,555. We've really drained a lot of our money over that time frame. Now, before we keep going further, let's look at markets real quick. Because I always like to look at, you know, they, they, a lot of people run Monte Carlo scenarios, things like that, which are great. I just like to look at like, what are historical rates of return? Like what are the market historicals? And let's take your plan and let's add it to a market historical return. Because a lot of times people don't think, they'll just think, okay, sequence of return risk, a couple of years I might go down. Let's look at like, what happens if we take your retirement plan and we put it in the year 2000? Right. Because the year 2000, we had three years of a down market. And you talk about sequence of return risk. What is sequence of return risk? Sequence of return risk is the risk that when you step into retirement, that the market is going to go down multiple years. And so what that means is for Ben, he's got nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars in assets. The market goes down. He still needs income out of those assets. So as the market is decreasing, he's taking money off of his assets in a down market. And so now the market has to come back up to get back to just what he lost. But on the way back up, he's still taking income. And so the sequence of return risk is, man, you walk into retirement and you get hit in the head like a baseball, right? Get hit in the head with a down market for a couple of years. So let's look at that. I want to look at if we go into the year 2000. So here we are at the year 2000. Here's our rate of return over here versus what 2000 did. So remember, negative 10, negative 13, negative 23. Boom. That's your sequence of return risk. There's the tech bubble right there. Three years in a row. Now, plus 26, plus 9, plus 3, plus 13, plus 3.5, 2008. Negative 38.49. Remember I said at the beginning of this, if you're in retirement for 30 years, you're going to on average face five recessions, at least two market crashes. So here's this market crash, 40%. That's using it the year 2000. And everyone who's talking about, oh yeah, historically you have a bounce back year after a down year. Historically you do, yes. When the market goes down one year, historically the next year the market is positive. But it doesn't always work that way. And we have history to prove that. Market was down 10%. Then it was down 13%. Then it was down 23%. Okay. So there could be factors from 2022 to 2023 that caused the market to still go down in 2023. So when you're thinking about I'm retiring, you've got to make sure your assets are positioned for market loss. So that you know, listen, if I retire in 2023, no matter what the market does, where my assets are at, I'm going to be okay. So for Ben, we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, based on where you're at, you're out of money at 72. If we have a normal or if we have a 2000 to 2008 situation. Okay. Now let's go back to his retirement plan and then we'll come back to the markets real quick. Let's see. Matthew said, or Fast Eddie said, he's asking about health insurance. Matthew, how much is it? Do you mind me asking? Matthew says over $1,200 a month. That's not unusual. That's not unusual, especially on ACA. $1,200 a month, which is really important to make sure that you are keeping your income or trying to keep your income below the threshold so you can get subsidies. Um, Matthew says this, just me. I was diagnosed with cancer, have good assets that so don't qualify for any Benefits and Matthew, that's and first of all, sorry about the diagnosis. We're praying, hopefully that that you're, you know, that's not going to be an issue going forward. But yeah, the income based ACA subsidies that that can really hit you. So that's why you want to look at a plan saying, okay, can I lower that income? Maybe get some subsidies, lower that health insurance cost. When you can't do that, when you're in a situation like you can't, then you just got to have a plan. And you know, Matthew is a great example. We don't know what life's going to throw at us. You know, things happen. People pass away. We get diagnosed with things that we don't like. Um, you know, I've got many clients who stepped into retirement as a couple 
And then one of them has passed away unexpectedly, very early in retirement. And so now we've gone from two social securities. We've gone from multiple streams of income to now we only have social security. We've lost a pension or our pensions cut in half. You know, I'm dealing with a client right now. She came to me because her husband just came in one day and said, hey, I'm leaving. And so it wasn't a death for her. It wasn't a cancer diagnosis, but it was a divorce. And now she's somebody who's never handled the finances. She's always worked. She's done a really good job, you know, working and making income, but she's never dealt with the investments or the social security, anything like that. And she's coming to me like, what am I going to do? And that's why you really want to have a plan. And, and if you're married or if you're a couple, or you have a partner and you guys do investments together or finances together, married or not, you guys really need to be working together on this to make sure the other person at least has an understanding. If something happens to me, this is this is what you can do. Or if something happens to you, this is what you can do. Or at least call this person because they can help you. All right. So I'll get off my soapbox there for you for a minute. So here we are at Ben. Now we're just using. Remember, we're just using that 6% rate of return. Now, it's not a full 6% rate of return because the money that's in the bank's earning zero. So we're basically starting at $929,000. We've got Social Security kicking in at 62. And then if you look at this, here's the cars that he wants to buy. There's our inheritance of 175,000. So we got we go from 402 to 585. There's our car. And there's our next car. Now, keep in mind, we're doing projections for Ben. So if he does, if he gets to, let's say, 69, and we've got $565,000 in assets, we start at 929. And now, where's that 49? There it is. It's 69. We've got 565. I might be talking to him like, you sure your car can't can keep going? Like, you can't keep going on your car? So it's not necessarily that we're going to use, we're going to, this is going to be like to the T. That's why we do our annual reviews or our quarterly reviews, depending on what, what's going on in your world. But this is just, we want to have, we want to put all this in. Like you want to travel for 10 years, you want to buy a car, you want to help your you know daughter with her wedding. You want to do this out of the other. We want to have that planned into our retirement. So for him, we're out at 88 years old. So we're at 88 years old. We're out of spendable assets. We do have some real estate. He does have a condo that he lives in that, with, that we could sell, reverse mortgage something. But it's not necessarily where we'd like to be. So now we look at it and we say, OK, we're out at 88 years old based on some of the assumptions that we made, which is really good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling him he can't retire because he's out at 88 years old. I'm not saying that at all. I think 88 is really good. But when I look at the decreasing of those assets as fast as they were decreasing, look at this. We're at 929, right, when we start. By the time we get to Social Security, we're at 565. What I'd like to see at Social Security is these assets kind of coming, either staying even or coming up a little bit, but they don't. They continue to decrease. Here's the inheritance of 175. If we take the inheritance out, okay, so let's go to cash flows. Let's take the inheritance out of this. Go back to retirement because inheritances aren't, you know, like you can't say that that's guaranteed. We take the inheritance out. Calculating, calculating. We're out at 80 years old there. 234. What's our rate of return that we need to avoid a shortfall? Come on, Internet. Come on, Internet. 7.4%. So about 2% what we expect. Here we're out at 80. We take the inheritance out, we lose about eight years. I'm not saying he's not going to have the inheritance, but we do lose uh, about eight years. And so, again, there's things that need to be adjusted in Ben's scenario so that he can continue or he, so that he can retire. So now we go back to we go back to the income. So we, we go to Ben. Now, keep in mind, there's certain things that you can control in your retirement planning. And there's certain things that you can't control in your retirement plan. What are some of the things that you can control? Now, you can leave these in the comment section, put these in the chat. But some of the things that you can control in retirement planning are your expenses. How much do you need on a monthly basis? Now, there's, there, be, there comes a time when there's a baseline that you can't control anymore. Like you're going to have property taxes. You're going to have health insurance. You, you got to eat, right? You don't want to go back to college and eat ramen noodles. We, we got to eat, right? And you want to eat healthy. So there's certain there's a certain baseline. You're like, OK, I can't I can't do anything about my expense. But you can look at your budget and you can say, are there ways if you really want to retire early? 
Can I retire at 55? Can I? There's been so many people. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and we were talking about their budget. We were talking about them spending and their retirement and they were complaining because of the amount of money that was going to go out of their plan if they retired at the age they were retiring and saying, I just got to make this work. Da, 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 da. And as we're on the phone, I hear on the other end, hey, welcome to Starbucks. Can I take your order? And so I'm again, I'm not against Starbucks. I like Starbucks. I think they got good coffee. But if you're wanting to retire, if you're serious about it, there might be some things that need to be adjusted. So your budget's one thing that you can look at. The other thing that you can control in your retirement is how long you work and how much you save. So you can't always control your job. Obviously, there's layoffs, but you can work. You could probably get a job. Now, there might be a disability. You might have something happen where you can't get a job. You might not get the job that you want. I have so many people that call me or we talk and they, they, they've lost their job. And I go, well, can you go do this? Well, you know, my degree's in this and that's just, under, I'm, that's not what I want to do. I'm underemployed. And I'll say, well, listen, you've been looking for six months. Just do something. And so you might just need to do something for a little while. So for Ben, what we can control is how long he works. So what if we said, oh, hey, Ben, why don't you just work to 55, right? Oops, not T. What if we get you to 55 years old? Because now at 55, we can get the rule of 55. We can get five, really four and a half years to age 59 and a half. So instead of eight years to 59 and a half or seven years, now we're at four and a half years. So we're trying to say, okay, let's just look at little things. Do you like your job? Yeah, I like my job. So why don't we just keep working just for a couple more years? All else being equal, right? Our assets being the same. Now, we do have a monthly contribution into this 401k. He has a base salary. It's 36. It's a 6%. Let me see here. Something. Let me grab my calculator real quick. And again, we're not counting in his commissions. He has 36000 his annual salary. He does get commissions. We're just using the base salary at this point. We add in the commissions on our reviews. So we add in his income as we go through this on a, on a quarterly basis. Uh, 6% divided by 12 plus 2. So his contribution is 401k, just on the base salary is 360 a month. It's going to be a lot higher than that because he's getting his commissions, but let's just look at it. So we're using the base, we're putting in the 360 into our 401k. Now we're going to retire at 55. So we go to retirement. Now we're at 88 years old. Remember, we took out his inheritance. He had an inheritance in there and that was getting him to 88. So let's go back to cash flows. Let's add in the inheritance, let's do this as a one time. It was $175,000, it's property, so you'll be able to sell it. Uh, I don't exactly remember what year we did it. So let's just say 2035. All right, it's a one time. Uh, taxable external scores, and we're gonna put it into, let's put it into his cash flow account which is just like a taxable brokerage account, basically. So we go back to retirement and now I've got it to 92. So basically we get to 92. I'm feeling really good about this, right? Retiring at 55, getting to 92 based on what he's currently at. We're trying to average about 6% with his investments. In order to never run out of money, he needs to earn 6.52. So we only have to earn another 0.52 to never run out of money, which means we don't have to take huge amounts of risk in the market. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Most people think I got to earn eight, nine, 10, 11, 12% every year. If I don't do that, I'm doing something wrong because I was reading on Reddit and I was watching CNBC halftime and I was talking to my friends and all they're earning nine, 10, 11, 12%. I, that's what I need to be earning. Do you need to be earning that? Or do you just need to earn six and a half percent and never run out of money? And so you want to look at your plan and go, this is how much I need to earn to never run out of money. This is the exact rate of return that I need to earn to never run out of money. And then that's how I need to adjust my investments. The market's going to throw you go curveballs and you're not going to earn 6.5% every year. But if you're invested for a 6% rate of return, instead of at 37, trying to be invested for an 8, 9, 10% return, you're not going to face the volatility that the overall market's going to do. So when that sequence of return risk does come, and it will come, you're not pulling out of your retirement assets as it just depletes. Maybe it's just a little bit more 
I guess soft landing is a good word. That's a word we use today more than a hard landing. So we look at this, we say, hey, Ben can go to 92 years old. Feel pretty good about that. Feel really good about that. And we've got the inheritance and we've got commissions that we're going to add in. And think about this. His current income is $36,000. That's his base income. Okay, $36,000 is his base income. He's going to get commissions on top of that. But he could also work 55 years old. You know, he told me he does like sports. He said, you know what? I could go, you know, this guy, uh, Ben lives in Colorado near Denver. He says, I can go work Broncos games. I can go work the Rockies games. I can do something. So if you can earn a little extra income, think about it like this. Let's go to cash flow. Let's add in like some part-time work. So Ben's single. So we're just going to add in. And so, you know, there's not like travel is going to be there. But what if he just wants to work a little bit to, to keep his mental approach, right? Because um, I think it was, I can't remember what the study was, but it said if as long as you're keeping your, the longer you keep your mind active and working and doing something, the longer it's going to stay. You're not going to go into like a, uh, what do they call it when you start to lose? Like you're going to keep your cognitive ability. And so you want to continue to do things. Um, I think Barron's has had a huge uh, section of their magazine over the last few months. It's all been dedicated to health. And they were talking about doing Sudoku puzzles and, and crossword. You just thought grandma was doing a crossword puzzle because she was bored. No, grandma was doing a crossword puzzle to keep her mind sharp. So here's some part-time work. Let's just say we earn $15,000 a year. So that's $12.50 a month. So let's say we earn $12.50 a month. That's our net. I mean, that's our gross. We're going to start that uh, when he retires. Uh, let's just say we'll put it in uh, November when he retires. Let's do this for 10 years. Let's just work for 10 years, see what that looks like. Coming from a taxable external source, we're going to pay expenses with that. We're going to save and close this. Look at that. We never run out of money. Because he's adding in, what, like an extra $15,000 of work, extra 1200 bucks. So there's ways that you can make your plan work in the sense of, you know, his when Ben and I met, love Ben, man. This guy is like excited about retirement and he wants to do whatever he's got to do to retire. And he said, Drew, I don't want to look at why I can't retire. I want to look at how can we make this work? And so we've gone through all the scenarios. We've done the things. He said, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that so that I can retire. And so working part time, making twelve hundred dollars a month. Gross. So net, what is that? Net about 800 bucks, maybe. Um, that gets him to 100. 